Hello, and welcome to the latest installment of the ARIS Innovator Demo Series. Today we're going to talk about platform integrations using Federation Services. A quick note about the demo series, it runs for 30 minutes and features all demo with no sales pitch. Typically twice a month, we show you a different capability of the ARIS Innovator platform. Once the demo is complete, you can visit our website, www.aris.com slash demo series to view past demos as well as register for upcoming demos. We have on the line today Eli Donahue, Aris Labs lead engineer. Eli, take it away. Thanks, Nicole. Today we're talking about the Aris Federation Services project. So this project is a prototype that we're creating at Aris to help us explore the different use cases and business requirements that our customers and community have regarding data federation. So before we jump right in, just cover what we're going to look at today. We're going to talk about the goals for the project, for this prototype that Aris Labs has been working on. We'll take a quick look at the current state of federation in Aris Innovator. And then we'll take a look at how things are going to change and the approach that we're going to use for the platform services approach. After that, we'll jump into a demo for the use case that we're looking at today, which is a JIRA integration. So one of the big goals that we have for this Federation Services demonstration is to show how the ARIS platform can work as a backbone, how you can use it as your single source of truth and federate data into as well as two other systems that you might have in place in your organizations today. Additionally, we want to show how you can apply the modeling approach to system connectivity. So just like you can model your processes in Innovator, like you might model your lifecycle or your workflow, and you can model your data in Innovator with item types, we also want to show that you can model how your different systems are connected and how the data is moving from one system to another. We also want to be able to reduce the amount of custom code that you write to manage data federation across your systems. Right now, everything that you're going to see here today in the demo is possible to do on the current ARIS platform. The difference is that it requires some amount of custom code to achieve these goals. So what we're trying to do is take the commonly used use cases and write some methods and some services that you can use across all of your use cases to reduce the amount of custom code that you have to write, maintain, and update. And we're also going to want to provide a UI for being able to view how your systems are connected. So you can get that 50,000 foot view of how your systems are connected and where your data is coming from and going to. So right now in ARIS, if you want to federate data from another system, you're going to have some sort of data model for that external system. And when we say external system, that could be something like uh, an existing system that you already have in place at your organization and it's working for you. It could be some legacy system that isn't being updated, but you still need access to that data. Or it could be something like data files. You know, Maybe it's not a database. Maybe it is a flat file of data that you got from a vendor or maybe a contact file that you have, it could be a CSV, an Excel file. So everything can be represented as an external model. And then we also have some sort of item type in Innovator that you want to get that data from the external system and get it into that ARIS item type. So right now, what it's going to take to get that data from your external system into your ARIS item type is some custom code. So this is something that, is, as I mentioned, is possible on the current platform. But what we're doing is we're looking to make it a little bit easier. So we're taking a look at the platform services approach. One of the common ways that we provide functionality through the ARIS platform is to provide sets of services. So some sort of API or common functionality that you can use across multiple use cases. We've done this with the configuration services approach for variant management. We also have effectivity services for managing your effectivity. And we're taking a look at using that platform services approach for data federation. So in a scenario where you're using ARIS federation services, you're still going to have your external model. And you're still going to have your ARIS item type where you want to show that data within ARIS. For this case, we're going to call it our neutral model because the neutral model is independent of any external system. It's defined only as how you need to see the data in Innovator and not necessarily how the data is represented in the system that that data is coming from or going to. 
And then here we're gonna have two concepts when we're talking about the data that is traveling between the external system and ARIS. So you have your service. So this is the how the data gets back and forth. This could be something like a RESTful API, a web service, maybe a SOAP web service. It could be SQL, it could be a file, a flat file. So any number of ways that you could be transferring that data. And then we also need to look at the format. So the service is the how, and then the format is actually what the format of that data is. So that could be something like generic JSON. It could be something more specific like OData that has a metadata service to go with the data that's being transferred. It could be XML, CSV, anything you could have here. You could have your own in-house service and your own in-house format that you use for maybe a homegrown tool and you would still be able to represent that and use that with the Federation services. So now we're starting to look at something that's a little bit different than the current approach to Federation on the ARIS platform. Here we have a system model. This is going to be an ARIS item type or a structure of item types that directly in a one-to-one -one manner represents your external model, so the data model in your external system. This is going to allow us to create mappings that can be reused across systems and reused across different neutral models. So for instance, maybe you are, you need to bring in some data from an external system and maybe you need to get that data into two different item types in Innovator. This system model allows you to define what that external model looks like once and then use it with multiple neutral models in ARIS. It's also going to allow you to share that model with different organizations. So we'll take a look at that as well. So this Federation Services layer here, this is a reusable API that will give you some functionality. So we're looking at targeting 80 to 90% of your data Federation use cases right here. And you would be able to reuse this either in your own homegrown Federation, or you could use it in one of the extensions that we're gonna take a look at. So when I mentioned being able to share a system model across multiple organizations or across multiple neutral models. This is the extension concept. So the idea that the ARIS Federation Services is gonna get you 80 to 90% of your use cases, but we need a way that we can extend the services to be used for different uh, external models or maybe homegrown tools that you need to be able to integrate with Innovator. And then what we have here is the model mapping. So this is actually going to tell us the how and the when we're going to bring in that data from the external model into our neutral model. So this model mapping is a configuration structure that includes data about how the properties need to be mapped, as well as some logic for when that mapping needs to occur. So we will see a little bit more about that when we get to the demo portion of this presentation. So today we're talking about a JIRA use case, uh, JIRA integration. So our external system is going to be JIRA, and that external model is going to be the JIRA issue. And that data is going to be transferred to and from ARIS via JSON. So what we have is we have webhooks that have been set up in JIRA to send data to Innovator whenever a new issue has been created. And then we also can use the JIRA REST API to in turn get that data from JIRA into Innovator when we need to. Our system model is going to reflect the issue object in the JIRA system. And then our neutral model is going to be the ARIS PR, so our problem report item type. This is largely out of the box. The form looks a little bit different, but the data model is largely the same. So now we'll go ahead and we will jump into our demo. So as I mentioned, uh, we're showing how we can bring JIRA issues into ARIS. So we can just go and we can see that some of these have been federated in already. We can go ahead and open up one of these. You can see some data has been brought in. You can see we've assigned a reporter. You can see created and updated, all sorts of information. So we're going to take a quick look at how we get one of these into the system. So I'm going to go ahead into JIRA and we're going to go ahead and create a new issue. So go ahead, new issue. All right, so we tell what project we want this issue to be in, and we'll just go ahead and call this demo series. And I can put all sorts of information in here that we know will be mapped into Innovator. So I can go ahead and put the description. I can go ahead and I can set things like the priority, 
And the way we have the mapping set up in Eris, Eris will know what priority to show for the PR based on the item that we've selected from the list here. So we can go ahead and I can assign this to somebody, go ahead and assign it to myself, and go ahead and create this issue. So now what's happening behind the scenes is the webhook that I have created in JIRA is sending that issue data to an ARIS web service, as well as some information about that event that triggered the webhook. So if I go here, go ahead and search our PRs, and we're going to see the new PR we just created. And go ahead and open that up. We can see the description that has been brought in. This is uh, an ID from JIRA along with the title. We can see what project it was assigned to. We can see, you know, it was assigned, it was reported by me and I assigned it to myself. We can see that priority has been set based on the external system. And I also have a button here that I can click and we can go ahead and link directly back to that JIRA issue. So we have this uh, traceability across the systems where we can go make sure that we can find the JIRA issue from the ARIS PR. So now that we've seen how it works, we're going to talk a little bit about the configuration. The ARIS Federation Services has this concept of a federated system. And you can think of this as a container item type for all of the mapping data for any mapping that we want to do from a specific system to ARIS. So for this instance, we have JIRA. So that's our external system. And we can set some information here about how the data is being transferred. So in this case, it's an API, you know, the information about the format and the service type. And then we can also see information here about the mappings. So that's what we're really interested in here. We can see that we are mapping from a JIRA issue to an ARIS PR. And here we have all the information about the property mappings. So one of the things that we've taken into account with the property mappings is that it, we might not always have a one-to-one -one mapping from an external property on an external item to an ARIS item. So we can see here that we have, if we notice the title back here, so we have two different JIRA properties that are being populated into this property. So we have the JIRA ID and the summary. And we have a neat little drag and drop UI that we can use to actually set these templates that tells us how we want to bring in that data and how it needs to be formatted. So this is all data that's brought in and given to us by that JIRA webhook. And then it's, it's as simple as drag and drop into the mapping template. We also have a couple mapping functions. These wouldn't be limited to our own. And these would be extensible as well. So you could create your own mapping functions or modify existing functions, very much like Excel. So say we just want to truncate something that's being brought in. We only need a preview of it in ARIS. We don't need a whole paragraph of information from the external system. Then we could use something like the truncate function. And one other thing that we've taken into account with property mapping is that we might not always want to store the data in the ARIS database. Sometimes you're going to want to get that data on the fly when you open up a pre-R. So you want to see what the latest information from JIRA is. You don't necessarily want to see data that was stored in ARIS at the time that that issue was created, because something might have changed. So we have this setting here that allows us to determine on a property by property basis which data we want to store in ARIS versus which data we want to get on the fly whenever we open up a PR. So we have a couple items here, uh, like the external ID from JIRA, as well as an external link. We want to make sure that these are stored in the ARIS database so that we have that access to the external item. But for the most part, the rest of the data on these PRs, we want to be pulled from JIRA every time we go open one up. So I can show an example of that. We can go ahead and we can add a property mapping here. If I go ahead and lock this. Say we want the issue number to be brought in from JIRA. Maybe we don't want the issue number to be stored in ARIS. So what I can do is I can go in here, grab the item number, and then we can either use the, the drag and drop UI, or for simplicity, since I already know what we need to bring in from the JIRA, we can go ahead and we can save that. Close these guys. And then go ahead and run a new search. And since this data is being brought from the external system, 
not save that. Oh, we need to make sure we're telling it we're getting it on the fly. There we go. Now if we go and do search, we're getting these IDs from Jira, and that's being mapped in. And if I want to go back, I want to change it back. Maybe I changed my mind. Somebody thought the uh, ID would be better, but maybe maybe that's not what we want. Go ahead and save that. Go run a new search. And we're back to using the data that we already had stored in Eris. So that's one of the really nice flexible things about the property mappings. Property mappings tell us how we want to get that data into Eris or to an external system. But we also need some degree of logic to know when that data is going to be mapped. So for this, we use rules. So we can go ahead and open up a rule here. And a rule is basically a container for any logic you need to have. So for this case, we want to make sure that we're only creating a new PR in Eris if the issue that was added in Jira really is a new issue. And we also want to make sure that this issue is a bug. So issue is kind of like a poly item in Jira. So you can have bugs, you can have issues that are tasks, that are epics. We want to make sure that we only create a PR for something that's a bug. So we've created this logic here to make sure that the issue type is really a bug. So once Eris has determined that all of the conditions are met for this rule, then we'll execute some operations. Here we have a really simple case where we just want to create a new PR to represent that issue in Jira. Now these could be more complex. You could have a chain of operations that happen. Um, you know, maybe you create the issue or you create the PR in Eris and then maybe you send somebody a notification or maybe you promote it to a certain state. Here we have a, a pretty straightforward use case. So this is a high level overview of the property mappings as well as the logic. So the what and the how and the when the data gets brought into Eris. And with that, I believe we're ready for some questions. Do we have any questions, Nicole? Thank you, Eli. Make sure to enter in any questions you have into the Q&A panel. We do have a few submitted so far, so let's jump into those. Will Federation services support bidirectional sync? Yes, so that is in the plan. Right now, uh, what you're seeing here is a prototype. So we've gone and we've implemented some very specific use cases that we've heard frequently from the customers, from the community. So I don't have a demonstration of that ready today, but it's definitely in the plan, both for the prototype and for Federation services as a product when it hits the roadmap. I'm actually seeing a couple questions about service pack. What service pack version of Innovator is Federation on? Which service pack includes Eris Federation services? Um, so maybe you could answer those. Yeah, absolutely. So right now, um, what you're seeing is not product yet. So this is a prototype that Eris Labs has been working on to investigate the business cases and requirements of the community, of our customers. So what we're going to do is when we get enough interest and enough feedback, our team will package up everything that we've done for this prototype. We'll hand it off to a product manager and the development team, and then they'll work on building out a product delivery. So it'll be delivered via some service pack, but right now it's not targeted for the roadmap. We're still in the investigative phase. So the short answer is it's not currently included in any service pack, but all of the functionality that you've seen can be accomplished via custom code in existing service packs. For this demo, I've used SP15, but we've been working on this for a while. So it's it was uh, SP12 at first, then SP14, SP15. So this will continue to evolve as product continues to come out. Okay, thank you. Can Federation services be used for data migration performed once rather than steady connection between external systems? That is an interesting use case. Uh, I don't see why not. I think it's definitely possible. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be, I think that would be fine. How do you hook up the information coming from the external system to the configuration in Eris? So that's going to depend on what your external system is. So in this case, we've used the webhooks provided by Jira. And so since we know what that data is coming in from Jira, we know how that we can handle it. So the different system types 
that we have the different data services that we have coming in. This is an example of a RESTful service along with JSON as the format of the data being communicated. So we have, we can generically figure out how to take that data from the input from the external system and then be able to format that and get that into ARIS. So that's going to depend on different systems and that's something that Federation Services will include. So we'll include some logic uh, of how to get that data from the external system into your internal or your, uh, your neutral model. And then if you have some edge cases that are maybe exceptions to the rules that we've determined, then you can use an extension to kind of bridge that gap. On the mapping window, is the sort order an XY position for where the field is displayed? So the mapping, right now there's no, there's no XY positioning. So if we take a look at one of these PRs, we have set up this form just using the ARIS form modeling tools. So it's possible that maybe, maybe you could do something like that, but at this point that has not been part of the use cases that we've been looking at up to this point. Does the plan include interacting with workflows like voting? Absolutely. Uh, if we take a look at some of these operations, go ahead and lock this. So we can see here that there's a lot of different types of operations that we've looked at. And some of them are locking, promoting to a state, so that would be our looking at a life cycle, voting to an activity, that's our workflow. Um, so not all of these are implemented in this current demo but it's definitely something that we're considering moving forward, being able to do more than just create and update and, and delete items. Are properties created as standard properties and or federated properties? So right now they're being created as standard properties. If we go take a look at, go ahead and lock this. So our source model is what we're gonna take a look at here. So this is the item type structure that represents the issue object in JIRA. And we can see that these are just standard ARIS properties. So they aren't, they aren't necessarily being federated. That, was, that would be something you'd need to do today if you were going to write custom code. But for this, we're just representing the external system so you don't have to mark them as federated. Can federation also be used for content? Absolutely. Uh, any sort of system that you have the ability to either bring data in or send data to via some service, you can use. So it doesn't matter what that data is. That could be issues, that could be you know, blog content, that could be anything, anything you need it to be. Are you using a cloud instance of JIRA or a local instance? So for this demo, I'm using a cloud instance, but we also have some folks on our team who are doing some testing with using a local instance of JIRA. So yeah, we will be able to support both. Thank you, everyone. There are more that are streaming in. I apologize for the ones that we're not going to get to today, but we will reach out to you with the answers to all of your questions. I'm going to leave you with our upcoming demo series topics. On December 6th, we'll be going over quality planning, and then we'll see you next year with a kickoff to the demo series schedule focusing on change management on January 17th. Again, you can register for upcoming demos and view any past demos at www.aris.com slash demo series. We'd love for you to join the open ARIS PLM community. We have blogs, forums, community projects, and knowledge bases with a lot of good information. Finally, be sure to follow ARIS on social. You can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, where we share industry-related news and articles, the latest ARIS news, products, assets, and more. We thank you for joining us today and look forward to having you join us next time. Thank you and have a good day.